Maggie Q has built her career around playing tough women who aren't afraid to get in on the action. Formerly a successful model and actress starting out in Asia, she has had a steady rise in Hollywood, including notable performances in Mission Impossible 3, the Divergent series, and working alongside Kiefer Sutherland on the hit television series Designated Survivor. Here are 10 things you probably didn't know about Maggie Q. Early Life Margaret Denise Quigley was born on May 22, 1979, in Honolulu, Hawaii, to a Vietnamese mother and a father of Irish and Polish descent. She has two half-siblings from her mother's previous marriage, as well as two older sisters. She was an exemplary student. She studied at Mililani Waina Elementary School and Wheeler Intermediate School, before enrolling at Mililani High School, where she was part of the cross-country, track and field, and swim teams. After she graduated in 1997, she wanted to study veterinary science and even received an athletic scholarship from a private university. However, it soon became apparent to her that her family could not support her academic dreams financially. Thus she decided to leave Honolulu so she could accumulate the necessary amount of money to further her education. She started as a model. It was at the advice of a friend that she moved to Asia to try her luck modeling, first in Tokyo and later Taipei, before eventually ending up in Hong Kong. During this period, she adopted the moniker Maggie Q, as the Chinese could not pronounce Quigley properly. She was somewhat of a protege to Jackie Chan. The most important turning point in her career occurred when she met superstar Jackie Chan. Under his tutelage, she learned the importance of professionalism and the necessity of doing one's own stunts. Despite never having practiced martial arts before, her background in sports helped her to successfully undergo the training. After her debut show House of the Dragon became a hit, she made an easy transition to the big screen with films such as Model from Hell, Gen Y Cops, and Manhattan Midnight, winning the adoration of Chinese film fans in the process. Her portrayal of Jane Quigley in Gen Y Cops impressed Chan so much that he got her a small part in his 2001 American film Rush Hours 2. Her breakthrough role. After establishing herself in Hong Kong, she relocated to the U.S. full-time in 2006, beginning with her breakthrough role as Jen in Tom Cruise's Mission Impossible 3. Major roles followed in blockbuster films like Live Free or Die Hard, before Q dedicated her time to the lead role in the TV series Nikita in 2010. The show ran for four seasons, while Q began work on the Divergent trilogy of films. She did nearly all her own stunts in The Protégé two months after major spine surgery. In the action movie The Protégé, Q stars as an assassin avenging the death of an important person in her life. It's a physically demanding role, stunts and fights, which is nothing new for the actress. But the timing of the film was unusual, she started shooting two months after having spinal surgery. She said, even though it was against my doctor's recommendations, I know my body and I heal quicker than most. And I was gentle with myself during the rehearsal process. Talk about mind over body. But she assumed everyone on set was informed ahead of time about her surgery and was startled to find out that wasn't the case. I will never forget the look on the stunt coordinator's face when I told him. He really looked like he was going to cry because his job is to protect me and keep me safe. But Q powered through and was able to execute 98% of the stunts on her own. She was forced to turn down to return to Mission Impossible franchise twice. Maggie Q has been asked to return to the Mission Impossible franchise twice, after appearing in 2006's Mission Impossible 3. The actress said prior contractual obligations prevented her return as IMF agent Jen Lei. She told Yahoo, I did Mission Impossible 3 and they wanted me back for 4, but I was on a show, then they wanted me back for 5, and I couldn't do it, because I was contracted. Although Q doesn't state which shows she was contracted to that prevented her return, she was starring in the CW's hitman show Nikita from 2010 to 2013, and in the CBS crime drama Stalker between 2014 to 2015. She has her own business. In addition to acting, Maggie Q is also a self-starting entrepreneur. She has a technologies company in Asia that brings like social over to that side of the world for Western talent, a supplement company activated you, and a sustainable activewear line keep up. Her diet is strictly plant-based, but she doesn't call herself a vegan. Maggie Q, who ditched animal products more than 20 years ago, revealed that even though she follows a strict vegan diet, she does not call herself a vegan. She told The Beat, I don't call myself vegan, because it has become a weird negative term and people feel very judged by it. So I like plant-based better because it's friendlier, it's inclusive. 
you can't judge people. They have to be where they're at, and you have to accept them for where they are. She used to have a rule about only dating people who are vegan. In an interview with Tamron Hall, Q admitted that she used to have a rule about only dating people who are vegan. She said, it's very silly, because, you can't expect people to be where you're at when you meet them. So you need to meet them, and give it time, allow people the time to know you and your ethics, and come on board, if they feel like it. I used to be a person who, like, forced my beliefs on people and you had to live the way that I did. And I found a gentler approach actually works better. Q was previously engaged to Dylan McDermott. The Stalker co-stars met in 2014 and got engaged in 2015, but ultimately called it quits four years later. The designated Survivor alum, who has also previously been linked to Justin Long, Brett Ratner and Daniel Wu, has not publicly dated since McDermott. She gets honest about why she would never play a Bond girl. Any actor who's worked with someone in the vicinity of the James Bond franchise is bound to be asked whether or not they'd ever want to jump into that particular sandbox at some point. But don't expect Maggie Q in a 007 adventure anytime soon. While promoting the protege, Q was asked about whether or not she'd want to play a potential female James Bond. That question led to the revelation that at some point in the franchise's past, she was considered for the role of a Bond girl, only to be passed up as she was in Bond material. It seemed to work out for the better, considering Q shared these feelings with people about what goes into the role of a Bond girl, oh, I would never play a Bond girl. I personally wouldn't make that choice. I think Bond girls are awesome. I would rather be Bond. I'm sorry, I'm not going to suppress skill sets because they need somebody to look good in a film.